All right, we're reviewing for 2.4 through 2.7 test uh, coming up tomorrow. Uh, you'll notice in each of the headings um, on your review today, uh, there's a number in parentheses. This number represents the number of questions that will be like this section on your test tomorrow. I've really laid it out pretty um pretty plain and simple as far as what to expect for your test tomorrow. All right, uh, test questions are not necessarily the easiest you've ever seen, but you're absolutely capable of uh, completing them. All right, so let's start off with the first section. Translate the verbal sentences into equations. Translate the verbal sentences into equations. So we're going to work these three. Just write it as an equation. We don't have to solve. We're not testing any solutions. I just want you to write it as an equation. All right, Wame, what would you get for the first one? 11 minus y equals Very good. What about the second one? Who wants to volunteer? Jared? Very good. And you can write it two ways. R divided by 6 equals negative 4, which is how I would write it, or you can write it with the division sign. All right, what about the third one, Samantha? Times equals okay, so 18 times P. So do we need a dot in between? Do we need parentheses? Do we need anything in between the number and the variable? No, nothing in between the number and the variable. So make sure, because I will count off for that tomorrow on the test, make sure that it's just 18p right next to each other. There's nothing in between the number and the variable. Um, okay, so that's the first three questions out of the way. Now, in uh, the next four questions involve testing solutions. Now we are not coming up with the solution, but we are testing these solutions uh, to see whether or not they actually work out. And before you do that, I'm actually going to make a quick change to one of the problems. Okay, that's better. So go ahead and solve these two. 25 minus y equals 18 when y equals 6, and c divided by negative 4 equals 13 when c equals negative 52. Okay, did you simplify both sides all the way? Okay, so what I mean by that is, actually, let me go back, sorry. Um, okay, what I mean by that is make your substitution. So I have 25 minus 6 equals 18, right? 25 minus 6 equals 18. And then I need to now simplify 25 minus 6 and see if both sides are going to equal. So what is 25 minus 6? 19. 19. Does 19 equal 18? No, it does not. Okay, so I would say no, and I would box it in. I show that the, it does not equal. If all you say is yes or no, for all I know, you're guessing. This is your proof. This is your work. Okay? Does that make sense? What I need to see? Yes? Otherwise, you just say yes or no, and for all I know, it's a guess. All right, so now let's plug in the next one. Negative 52 over negative 4, does that equal positive 13? Yes. Okay, so I just say yes, and that's my answer, right? No. No, no. what do I need to show? No. Simplify this step. What is negative 52 divided by negative 4? Positive 13 equals 13. And I would say yes. I show that both sides equal. And I say yes. Okay? You're just showing and proving that you have an understanding of what you're doing here, testing your solutions. All right, now you have eight, pro eight problems where you're solving equations. I want you to start with these addition and subtraction problems. Solve for the variable. All right, someone raise your hand and tell me, what do you do first to solve for K? John and Deb? And you show that step. Add 11 to both sides. Write it directly underneath. And what does that mean? It means that the 11s cancel. <coughs> so that K is by itself. Negative 9 plus 11 is what, class? 2. 2, two. two equals K. It does it matter if I just say K equals 2? No, it doesn't matter. K equals 2 is fine. All right, what do I do to solve for P now? Samantha, what do you do to solve for P? 
Did it do it? I did. Okay. Alright, Maya? Yes, very good. I need to add 28. How did I know to add 28? Well, because that's the side that the variable's on. So 28 plus 28 is 32. 32 plus 32 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 is 32. So notice, and this goes back to number 13 on your quiz. Notice, guys, on all of these equations, the side with the variable is the side that I'm always, um, you know, that has the operation. The variable is never, never starts by itself on one side of the equation, which is what a lot of you did on your quiz. Remember, the variable is attached to the operation in an equation. So I add 28 to both sides, and P equals 25. P equals 25. Anybody get both of those right? Did you get both right? Very good. All right, now we're going to solve uh, some multiplication and division problems. All right, so uh, on the first one, how am I going to solve for W? What do I need to do to both sides? L'Oreal, what did you do to solve for W? I need to multiply by what? Multiply both sides, very good, by negative 12. Multiply both sides by negative 12. Uh, the 12's cancel. The W is left by itself. And W equals what? 180. Very good. What do I do on the second one? Samantha? You first have to take minus and subtract it. Mm-hmm. And what do you get? You will get 3M. Very good. 3M equals 21. Then what do you do? Very good. M equals 7. Who got both of those right? Anybody get both right? Very good. <clears throat> All right. So now we're going to find the unknown side length. I will warn you on the rectangle, which you do have one of these on your test tomorrow. There's just one extra step here that we talked about yesterday in class also. There's one extra step to solving uh, for the rectangle. Triangle is a little bit easier. Let's see who can get both of them. We'll talk about it in just a minute. I must have a variable in my equation. Well, what is the formula to find perimeter of a triangle? P equals A plus B plus C. What is my perimeter? 57. Okay, everybody pay attention. I'm going to do the triangle first. My perimeter is 57. Now, I don't know which side is which letter. I'm just going to say X plus 20 plus 21. This step right here, guys, this is your substitution. You must have an equation where you are solving for a variable. There needs to be a variable there that you're solving for. Okay, this all goes back to solving equations. All right, so I have to be solving for a variable. So now, can I simplify anything before I solve for x? Can I simplify anything? 20 plus 21, which is what? 41. 57 equals x plus 41. Now what do I need to do to both sides to solve for x? Subtract 41 from both sides. You say, well, Ms. Kinder, I can do all that in my head. I don't need to show all that work. And my response will be, it's going to get much harder much very quickly. And you need to understand how to set up these equations that include what you are solving for. What is your variable? What operation is connected to your variable? In this case, it was addition. All right, and then we solve the equation 16 feet is x. You will only get full credit on that question tomorrow if your equation is set up correctly. All right. Um, now, for the rectangle, P equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. 60 equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. All right. Now, I'm going to stop there. I want you to try to finish the rest. And remember what I said yesterday about solving these equations that just have that extra step in it. What do I do first? And then what do I do second? All right, we'll talk about it in just a minute. All right, so now I'm going to multiply 2 times 5 to get 10 plus 2x. What do I do next? Anybody remember what we talked about? What do I do next, Alex? Very good. You move what is not connected to the variable first. 10 is by itself, so you're going to subtract it from both sides to get it to cancel. All right, and now you're left with 50 equals 2x. Now, how would I solve for x? How would I solve for x? I need to divide both sides. All right, 
and x equals 25 inches. You have one just like this on your test tomorrow. Okay, so make sure you understand it. Last section of your test tomorrow, and I don't remember specifically how many questions. I think it's like maybe three or four questions of your test tomorrow are actually review questions from earlier in Chapter 2. So I want you to write an equivalent variable expression for these two expressions, and then I want you to simplify this expression over here on the right-hand side. So go ahead and solve these three. These will be the last three that we do. <coughs> okay, so uh, who thinks they know the answer to the first one? What's negative 3 times 5x minus 8? Nate? Very good. Negative 15x plus 24. All right, what about the next one? Cole, what'd you get? Negative 10a plus 20. Very good. Negative 10a plus 20. All right, um, what do you do first on the simplifying one? What, what would you want to do first on that one? Jonathan? Um, you'd multiply 4 by 6 and 6. Very good. 4x plus 24. And now we can combine what? Combine our like terms. Like terms. So 10 plus 24 is 34. And what's 4x minus 12x? Negative 8x. Negative 8x. Now, would it be okay if I wrote it negative 8x plus 34? Is that the same same thing? Yes. Yeah, it is because I didn't change my signs. And what property says that I can change uh, the order without changing the answer? It's commutative. Commutative. Commutative property says I can change the order without changing the answer as long as I keep my signs the same. Um, if you understand all that, you should be ready for your test tomorrow.